What's going on everybody? My name is Jason and this is Tennessee Mountain Homestead. And today I wanted to make a, a quick overview video of the transmission system uh, assembly that I built for this tractor yesterday. Uh, yesterday, the last couple days working on this thing, there's been so many, so much going on and I kind of glossed over the transmission yesterday uh, when I made that video and put that, put that together. So if you give me a minute, I'll get the camera and we'll get it up close uh, look at how I how I made this thing. Stay tuned. First thing that I wanted to show was this plate right here. Uh, this area and this this spot used to be open, just just like here. Um, so I did cut a little bit more of the frame out because there was there was something going on here. There was like a, a boss or a, a dimpled area right here. So I cut this square. Cut this side square. I think this side was already already shaped like this, but I did some cutting on this side to make it so I could put this piece of rectangular plate in here. And that is so I could bolt my modular transmission system to it. And these bolts are just temporary. I'll get some other kind of fastener. And the head will be on this side, like an Allen head or something, something, you know, a little more trim, a little more flush, maybe even a countersunk bolt. I don't know. Anyway, I did, I did mount this plate on here yesterday. And I gotta finish welding it up. But anyway, that's what's holding the, uh, the clutch mechanism. And then I also put, just put a C-clamp back here so I could put a tension spring on that, on that pulley, on that setup. That, that spring is just a, a random spring that came off of this mower. I'm not sure if it was for the mower deck or I don't know if it was for the brakes, I, I forget. There's like three or four springs that came off of this. So that's what's going on on the top side here. And then you can see the pulley right now, the, it's engaged, the, the system is under tension. And that's, that's my, uh, my engagement around this seven inch pulley. So it's, all, it's basically wrapped as much around it as it could be without a, uh, another idler pulley. But to me, I think that's, that's more than enough uh, pulley engagement for that belt. So, that's how it looks on the top. And uh, give me a minute. I'm gonna jack this thing up and we'll look underneath. Here we go. So I got the motor, uh, the mower doing a wheel stand right now. Um, it's being held up by a, uh, a cherry picker. That's what I use the most when I'm working on these things. So here's a close up of that system I, I made yesterday. You can see where it's bolted through to that plate that's on top of it. And you can see how it, the belt engagement around the transmission pulley. There's the, uh, the tensioner pulley. There is the only idler pulley that I've got so far on it. And it's, it's mounted to the frame with that 5 eighths bolt. That's what it looks like on the outside right now. And then of course, there's the motor. So it's really hard to kind of get a full view of this thing. But you can see that it's straight. The belt system is all straight as a, straight as an arrow. And it's got a good amount of tension already on it, just with just with this. So give me another minute and I'm gonna be right back. I'm gonna take that tensioner spring off of this. And I'll explain why in a minute. I took this this tensioner spring out of the out of the equation. So why I did that is because I mean I can I can use the clutch pedal. I can I can activate this thing when that spring's on there. But the only thing holding this lever, 
which is the lever that the clutch pulls on through this rod. See, that's the old uh, variator lever. This is the last thing that was on the mower that I did not take off. And that goes out to the clutch pedal assembly. And then you've got this rod that came off of my mower, the, the old John Deere L120. It was just some leftover rod I didn't need from that. And I, I, it was a lot longer than this. So I cut it and I bent it with the torch, drilled a hole in it for a, uh, a cotter pin. Anyway, camera's getting crazy. It's hard to, hard to focus with this thing. But anyways, so when I activate the clutch, I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn the clutch and you'll see complete disengagement from the belt. It's completely out of the way. Completely slack. That's what we want. Oh, and like I was going to say a minute ago, the only thing holding these levers, this and this, are these shaft collars that are just tack welded to these to these pieces of steel. And then there's a set screw. So with that spring on there, those set screws are tightened down all the way, and they don't seem to move or slip, but uh, it did slip a little bit yesterday, so I didn't want that to happen right now while I was showing. Anyways, once this is all said and done and tested, I'm going to weld these shaft collars and weld this lever to the actual rod all the way around, so it'll be, it'll be super strong. But that's how it works. And also, when I put it back, when I engage it, like release the clutch, You'll, you'll hear it, it'll get to a point where it'll, it'll lock itself. Back in, back in here, there's a piece of angle iron welded to the base of that plate that stops that lever from going back any further. But it's at like its fulcrum point where it, it gets to the, where it gets to a certain spot and it, it wants to rotate back the other way, like towards the ground. And it can't because that stops it, but it's, it locks itself into position. It feels like it, like it snaps into place, which is which is good, I think. So, anyways, that's it. That's how I set this thing up, and I can take those three bolts out, and that whole that whole assembly will come out of here. And it's all put together with shaft collars. The shaft, sorry, the shaft here is independent of that. Those aren't those set screws are set, but they're not nothing's welded. So that's going to spin free. The only two things that are going to be fixed to the shaft is this lever and this lever. Once I get them absolutely perfect where I want them. And the only other thing that I can think of, and if anybody watches this and has any input, is I've got from, from the engine pulley all the way down to the transmission pulley on the bottom, on the side that's going to be pulling. So this thing spins counterclockwise and it pulls, the belt's going to be going up around the motor counterclockwise. So this whole side on the bottom is going to be the tension side. And I don't know if I need another pulley down there. It doesn't touch anything. It's close to that cross member, but it's going to have a, I'm going to have a race underneath it anyways. Uh, a piece of you know flat stock or something. I don't know if it needs any other pulleys. The best that I can think what I would do if anything if it needed more tension, which I doubt, but if it did, I would put a idler pulley here on a pivot under under some spring tension that might just push up on this, you know, push it up that way. It'll give a little bit more engagement on the engine pulley, which I don't think it needs, but I mean more I guess more is better. But, you know, under a load, when this belt wants to be straight under a load, it could just push that idler pulley down and be straight, but still have more tension, if that makes sense. Well, if anybody has any, uh, has any input or 
suggestions, I'd appreciate it. But I just, I wanted, like I said, I wanted to make this video so everybody could see exactly what I did. Whoever's following this, if you're going to build your own, build your own mud mower, whatever. So once again, my name is Jason. This is Tennessee Mountain Homestead. Stay tuned and thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.